Coming up next on Stag's Country. He's back. After a near fatal illness, Fairfield's big man is ready to play basketball. How Anthony Johnson worked himself back into shape. He's more than just basketball. I could have died on the court. They come from far away places to play soccer here. What brought these four guys all the way from New Zealand? The freshman Kiwis. I was never supposed to walk and yet here I am running on the cross country team. The improbable story of cross country runner Greg Chase. His chances of walking weren't good, neither were his chances of living to see his first birthday. How he defied the odds. And a summer abroad to play basketball. Tara Flaherty gets the experience of her life and shares it with us. All this and more coming up next on Stag's Country. Hello, I'm Noah Finns, and this is Stag's Country, an exclusive look at Fairfield University Athletics. Over the next half hour, you're going to see some great stories about inspirational athletes and coaches. Athletes and coaches who have helped set the standard for success in their conference. In fact, the pressure is on to retain this trophy, the prestigious Commissioner's Cup. It's the award given to the most successful athletic program in the conference. Points are kept for all the sports, and last year, Fairfield's cumulative score was the best. And already, the Stags are off to a great start in the fall sports. Believe it or not, the men's and women's basketball teams will soon be in full swing here, and you'd be hard-pressed to find a player more excited about it than Anthony Johnson. He had most of last year taken away from him. As it turns out, he nearly had his life taken away from him. He was the pillar of strength. The Stags, Mr. Everything. But as last year's season wore on, Anthony Johnson seemed to wear out. He had no idea why. Like my game just started falling. So I thought it was like just like a drought like that everyone goes through. And so he worked harder, which as it turns out was probably the worst thing he could do. What Johnson and everyone else didn't know at the time was that he had developed a blood clot in each lung, a potentially fatal condition. The fatigue got worse and so did the pain. Never more evident than in last year's game against St. Peter's. I went up and dunked, and then like, I was like, okay, I can't. Like, I just went to the side and just laid on the bench because like, I couldn't do anything else. Like, I couldn't sit up because it was hurting so bad. The only thing more intense than the pain was his desire to play and to not let his teammates down until finally an ambulance had to take him to the hospital where he got the bad news. I was in my room by myself, and one of the nurses came in. It was before the doctor, and she came in and told me, like, what had happened. But she was like, you could never play basketball again. And then the, the doctor came in and told me like, what could have happened. And then I was like, okay, that makes like, it's more than just basketball. I could have died on the court. Johnson stayed in the hospital receiving treatment for a week, a painful week. And one night was probably like the worst night ever because like I just got like the worst pains, like the worst pains in my sides and it was, like, I felt like, all right, this is it. Like, I'm not going to make it to tomorrow. At that time, I felt like probably death would be better than how that felt. Because it was like someone just was, just was stabbing me in my side and just kept doing it. Doctors never figured out what caused the blood clot, but were able to treat it with medication. And now he's working himself back into basketball shape. That was horrible. Uh, I never could. Like, every time I ran, it just wasn't how I used to run. Like, I, I would get tired after the first sprint. He says he's at about 80% now, but knows he works out and plays with a risk. While doctors have cleared him, there's always the threat of the clots returning. There's a possibility of everything. So I'm going to take the possibility of playing because I love playing. It would have been more scary if I knew I wasn't going to play. Johnson will be monitored closely, but he's made it clear nothing will keep him off the court. When he's not working out with the team, hey, he's finding a game with students. And now he appreciates it even more because he came so close to having it all taken away from him. Ready for impact? Oh! The women's team is also excited to get the season started. 
One player, senior Tara Flaherty, brings experience from a unique summer opportunity. She represented her country in competition overseas. Kendra Farn has more on her summer abroad. The love of the game comes first. It's fun. It's Everyone loves the competition. She knows how to play, that's for sure. But for three years, she's been learning something else, how to communicate. Flaherty's major is new media, not at all a common choice for an athlete and a difficult balancing act, to say the least. I want to be all that I can be in basketball, but then again, I have another passion. And at the media center here, they, they demand a lot from you and want you to partake in outside activities all the time. She's learned the ins and out of the media world, editing, shooting, writing scripts. At first, I didn't like editing at all, but then I liked that I got to create my vision. So I love, I love filming as well. I think, you know, I like to shoot from my perspective. Which is exactly what Tara did for 10 days in June. She was part of a 10-person USA Athletes International organization that toured Europe playing against local teams. It was a taste of playing at the professional level in several countries, while at the same time, an opportunity to get behind the camera and chronicle the experience on and off the court. She didn't have the greatest camera, but she knew what and how to shoot. When I went there, I definitely liked that I had a camera or a, um, to take stills. And I liked that I got to show my perspective, so maybe I would like to do um, documentary films. Choosing between hoops and movies is not a slam dunk, though the career decision may be made for her. Definitely what kind of season I have now, and then, you know, all my, I have to weigh all my options, all my outside influences. She likes to tell a story, and either way, Tara Flaherty will have a great one to tell. Fairfield University is well represented this year at the New England Basketball Hall of Fame. Three stags inducted at a special ceremony at the Mohegan Sun. Former assistant coach Mary Ann Palazzi, who is now the coordinator of student programs in the athletic department, received entry for her standout high school career in Massachusetts. Men's basketball coach Ed Cooley, twice named the high school player of the year in Rhode Island. And Joe Frager, who before coming to Fairfield, coached Southern Connecticut State to a national championship. It's obviously a, a tremendous honor to be inducted and, you know, I happen to know quite a few people are being inducted, which also makes this extra special. Oh, you know, just uh, I know many of the uh, people that are being inducted, uh, but just the camaraderie that this uh, event brings is very, very special and I'm honored to be here. There are many international students here at Fairfield, but what are the chances that four soccer players from nearly 9,000 miles away end up here? Michael O'Keefe, Michael Eager, Johnny Raj, and Adam Cowan make up the freshman Kiwis. Kendra Farn has a story. They not only talk a little funny, they are a little funny. Great guys, bunch of characters. Uh, it brings some variety into our dressing room. They're like a sitcom, constantly cracking jokes, while at the same time, pretty darn good with the soccer ball. They're known on campus as the Kiwis. Yeah, we were blown away when we found out there was going to be four of us coming. All four of them recruited last year from New Zealand, now freshmen on full soccer scholarships, or is it football? You are calling it soccer, right? Uh, you don't football. call it that at home. <laughs> soccer? Soccer? <laughs> Soccer? No, I don't know. We're starting to change. We're getting used to it. Michael, Michael, Adam, and Johnny are known for tricks on and off the field. Two of the funny guys always playing jokes on us about, I don't know what a Big Mac is, I don't know what McDonald's is. The South Pacific to New England has taken a bit of adjusting. The food, the easiest transition. Um, Donuts are good though. Yeah, don't, donuts, donuts are, are found up here, really, really nice. They drive on the left side of the road. The climate is opposite. The time difference is 18 hours. The flight home, 20 hours and expensive. The Kiwis, therefore, will only go back home once a year. Oh, yeah, except for Johnny. Where are you going, Ben? Got a people, you know, got a few people to Who, visit. Okay. Who are you going to see? What's her name? Uh, I've got to see the girlfriend and the family. <laughs> <laughs> the other three say they'll sightsee. You don't get that opportunity going to New York City or Cape Cod and you know stuff, stuff like that. So I think over Christmas it'll be a good opportunity to go into New York City. This teammate is 15 minutes from home. I don't know if I'd be able to go to New Zealand for four years knowing that I'm only going to come home four times. 
So I respect them a lot for that, and I think that they're courageous guys for doing it. I think with all the international uh, student athletes, they do bring an appreciation of what we have here. I think it's at times, you know, I've been here 14 years now, and it is, you know, you can get a little bit complacent about what we have to offer here. You know, with the facilities, the beach, Manhattan, the academics, you know, and I think they come here and they, they couldn't believe it, you know, so uh, that, that drives it home. <laughs> Coming up next on Stag's Country. I'm talking to you, 15. When Coach O'Brien talks, his team listens. It's part of what makes him so successful. Plus, defying the odds. This cross-country runner wasn't given much of a chance to live, let alone star in college athletics. At Fairfield University, we explore big questions, complicated ideas, and unlimited possibilities. In a community of learners representing diverse beliefs, opinions, and experiences. Actively engaged in a caring, supportive, and fun community. Our education prepares us to be thoughtful, global citizens, serving the common good. At Fairfield University, you will get an inspiring education. For an inspired life. When was the last time you were challenged intellectually by a great speaker or wowed by an artistic performance? Fairfield University offers a provocative lineup of events that will enrich the lives of you and your family. Thrilling music, dance and theater performances, creative exhibitions, and thought-provoking lectures. Come to Fairfield University curious and leave inspired. I am proud of the work that you do as student athletes, and I want to take this opportunity to commend you for your hard work and your dedication to your academic and athletic careers. You have distinguished yourselves and deserve a great deal of credit for all of your accomplishments. It pays to make the Dean's List. Every semester, Fairfield University President Father Jeffrey Von Arks holds a breakfast for the top student athletes on campus. Just another way for the university to stress the importance of academics. On an occasion like this, we uh, honor just about 100 students who have achieved the Dean's List at the same time that they fulfill the demanding and rigorous schedule of uh, being varsity student athletes. I've often found that our student athletes are some of the most disciplined students that we have on campus because they simply have to be in order to fit in both their practices and also uh, the study, the expectation that we have that they be high achievers academically as well. One of the reasons Fairfield has so many athletes on the Dean's List, the coaches, they demand academic success here. In fact, as Kendra Farn reports, women's soccer coach Jim O'Brien is proud of how much he demands from his players. It's part of the reason his teams are enjoying so much success. We make better decisions in the final third. We get those three or four goals. If you're a fly on the wall in the women's locker room, you get some serious insight into Jim O'Brien the discipline, the concentration, okay, the working together and pulling together and getting the job done like we should have on Sunday. To say this soccer coach expects a lot from these 27 women would be an understatement. The bar is high, but O'Brien himself lifted it there. In his first four seasons at Fairfield, he's already got two MAC championships and two NCAA tournament appearances. It's easy to see why he was stolen from his alma mater, Southern Connecticut State. Time, time. Play, 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 good. Turn! Nicole, turn! But season five has its challenges. Pressure there, Jazzy, pressure! O'Brien's lost some key players from last year. He's now got a very young team, 21 freshmen and sophomores. So he's in a building process, one he says the university wholeheartedly supports. Uh, they also have very high expectations for the program. Uh, we, have a, we have a beautiful campus in a, in a, in a great location uh, with a great academic reputation, so it really helps in the recruiting process for me to be able to build a very strong program, and I knew that going in. O'Brien can be tough on these girls. You could have been a penalty, and you, and you were a penalty. That was, a, that was the stupidest freaking penalty I've ever seen. Two of you, okay? You know what, you got a problem? If you got a problem, you can come off. I'm talking to you, 15. I'm talking to you. You got a problem, you can come off. You've got a problem. Walsh, warm up. He can be tough off the field as well, expecting solid GPAs and a level of respect and honesty that he gives each and every one of them. I've always been able to speak to him about anything. Um, I easily can talk to him if I have 
ever a problem, I can come directly to him, and I know he's going to give me the answer that I need for for soccer, but also that's going to be better for me here at Fairfield and then once I graduate. O'Brien is a dad. He gets it. The, the stresses of being away from home, not so much the soccer-related things, but the parents do reach out to me to say, hey, so-and-so is, is, uh, is, is, is feeling a little bit down. Do, would you mind just, you know, you know, just checking on her for us? And even when the scoreboard doesn't go his way. Three, two, one. O'Brien refuses to lower the bar. Give me your goal five years from now, Jim O'Brien and Fairfield Women's Soccer. Um, five consecutive MAC championships, um, five consecutive NCAA tournament appearances, and um, hopefully several NCAA tournament wins for the program. And a raise. <laughs> yeah, that comes with it. <laughs> Ask Coach O'Brien or any coach, and they'll tell you it's all about resources. And these days, they all have one that enables them to find players recruiting budgets wouldn't otherwise allow them to find. That resource is the Internet. Out of the way, Fairfield! Out of the way! There's talent out there, sometimes way out there. So, how do you find it? We have a lot of uh, DVDs and VHS tapes, but now girls are just YouTubing themselves, and you just click on and you get the YouTube. Field hockey coach Jackie Kane can now find talent in faraway places with just a few clicks on her computer with what's being called e-recruiting. This is a player from Spain I was looking at. If a player has some skills, all they need is a computer and a camera to be seen by coaches all over the country. My mom actually was on the sidelines taping it a lot and I had a trainer back home who went out with me before practice and he taped it and I did the drills. And that's how Merritt Westenberg ended up at Fairfield, all the way from Holland. Coaches took a look at her video and quickly saw that she could play. Looking at a video, you're able to see enough as to whether you'd be interested. Right. Well, at first you're going to, they're always skills first off. And once again, internationally, I mean, if you look, they're stopping the ball dead on their sticks. And that's just in itself is just such a skill. The trained eye can see in a clip like this if a player has skills. And European players tend to be more skilled. Fairfield has two, Westenberg and Ann Neuenheis, also from Holland. They're more skilled, they just have to get used to American field hockey, which is a bit more intense. The home people don't understand, because I'll be like, I play field hockey in America, they'll be like, all right, big deal. And then I tell them, well, I practice three hours a day, and then two games a week, and they'll be like, wait, it's like professional field hockey, but it's like a whole different level. And for the coach to be able to see players from all over the world without having to leave her office has allowed Fairfield to play at a whole different level. This computer has absolutely made it easier and has put us all more on a level playing ground. When Stag's Country returns. It was by far the best experience of my life. We'll hear all the details. Plus, mixing college athletics with an intense academic program. This and more next on Stag's Country. I came here with a vision. Uh, my vision was to get the tools to be better at what I do. Location was important to me because uh, I wanted to make sure that it was in a place that will help me manage career, family, and education. I'm pretty familiar with the uh, Jesuit educational tradition, and that is the concept of searching for the truth, you know, within an umbrella of ethics and social justice. You know, there's something very enriching about participating in discussions with a very talented and intelligent group of people. At the end of the day, we are part of a something bigger than each of us individually, and I think that's part of what you get when you come to first for you. At Fairfield University, we explore big questions, complicated ideas, and unlimited possibilities. In a community of learners representing diverse beliefs, opinions, and experiences. Actively engaged in a caring, supportive, and fun community. Our education prepares us to be thoughtful, global citizens, serving the common good. At Fairfield University, you will get an inspiring education. For an inspired life.
Fairfield University men's and women's basketball season tickets are on sale now. Experience all the action of Stags basketball. Call 203-254-4103 or log on to fairfieldstags.com. Coming back to school, one inevitably gets asked the question, so what did you do this summer? Ask baseball player Rob Gariano that question, and he beams. He had himself a summer he'll never forget. Rob Gariano is on campus now with his team, getting ready for his senior season. He's coming off the best baseball summer he's ever had. It was by far the best experience of my life. Gariano played for the Harwich Mariners in the Cape Cod League. I mean, obviously, you hear about the Cape Cod League, and I'm just like, that's where I want to be. That's, that's the cream of the crops there, the best players in the nation. Gariano started there as a temporary player, having to earn a permanent spot on the team. He did, and then some. Pitched so well, he was named the league's pitcher of the week in the second week of the season. I just have such high expectations for myself, and I just knew that I could play with these kids. You know, I knew that I, I knew that I could play with them, and I wanted to prove it to, I mean, not only not only you know other people, I wanted to prove it to myself that I could stay. If there was a disappointment, it's that he wasn't drafted, and guys around him in the league were. We were playing, and. They were calling out everyone's names, every pick, every round, because everyone around you is like, oh, I got drafted, just got drafted. Like, you congratulate you. I'm like, okay, like, let's see what happens. Maybe I'll get drafted, and nothing happened. And I'm just like, oh, boy. Gariano is looking on the bright side now. Fact is, he got exposure in the Cape Cod League. Got to show off to major league scouts who otherwise wouldn't have seen him play. It was almost like I kind of used it as a little motivation. Like, you know, you didn't pick me up. But, you know, that's okay. I was like, I'm going to have a great summer. I'm going to learn so much. I'm going to take it back to Fairfield. I'm going to have a great time, and then I'm going to hopefully get drafted in my senior year. Rob Gariano is thankful for the opportunity to play in the Cape Cod League. Cross-country runner Greg Chase is thankful just to be here, to be alive, to have a family. Because for the first year of his life, none of that seemed likely. Let's go, Greg! When I come into that last final stretch and my body is just dead, I'm just thinking, you know what, Greg? It's just a little bit left. We've gone through more. More than anyone could imagine, Greg Chase, Fairfield's freshman cross-country star, was not born Greg Chase. He was born Carlos Javier Perez to a single 16-year-old mother in Honduras. Within a day, he and his twin brother were put into an orphanage. It's kind of amazing that you're not just here in this country, but here at all. Oh, it's it's amazing, you know. I think I thank God um, every time I go to sleep, and I say a prayer. The boys had been so badly malnourished, Honduran doctors didn't think they would make it past the next day. This picture of them was sent out to people looking to adopt. Enter Luann and George Chase. We didn't have any biological children of our own, and we weren't going to have any of our own. And we did want to have children, so we decided we might as well adopt. We have a lot to offer. And so they quickly agreed to adopt the boys. He said, we have two boys, they're twins. Do you want to adopt both? Or if you don't want both, you could have one and we'll separate them. And we both said, well, we're not gonna separate them. But they had to wait a year before they could bring the children home to Bristol, Connecticut. So they visited and hoped the process would progress and the boys would live. It was an anxious, tedious year. And finally, they were told they can take them home. At the time, the one-year-old boys weighed just 12 pounds, and whatever teeth they had were rotted out. The Chases just wanted to get them home. And we were holding them, and, and it was over. We talked to our interpreter, and I said, when can we get out of here? And, you know, we had two more days to stay. I said, get us on a plane. Get us out. Just, what does it cost to get on the next plane and get out of here? As soon as we hit Miami, we, like, kissed the ground because they couldn't touch them. <laughs> Due to the squalid conditions, Greg's legs never developed and doctors expected he'd never walk. But his parents and grandmother massaged and exercised his legs into walking shape. You were never supposed to walk. Yeah, I was never supposed to walk and yet here I am running on the cross country team. So, I mean, that's amazing and you know, I'm extremely thankful for that. It was like me telling the world like, look, I went against the odds and I'm here today, I'm running. Greg and his brother Michael, now a pre-med major at UConn, have defied all the odds. Doctors didn't expect them to live, didn't expect Greg to walk, and certainly didn't expect them to be high school honor students and a college athlete. And the boys know whom they have to thank. Yeah. We've, never, we've never sat down and been like, hey, mom, dad, we're really thankful for everything you've given, because we want to show it you know, through our actions. Um, when people say, oh, you guys have nice kids, or your kids are doing great in sports, or they read our names in the local paper, 
That's our way of saying thanks. Greg says he has success because he runs for others. His twin brother grew up with asthma, so he didn't have the athletic opportunities Greg did. If I don't push myself you know, to the farthest limits for him, then I'm letting him down, and he's been with me forever. So that's why I dedicate everything I do to him. Maybe the best other opportunities they did have. Mm, they were meant to come here to us, I say. People say they look like me. <laughs> Stag's Country will return right after this. At Fairfield University, we explore big questions, complicated ideas, and unlimited possibilities. In a community of learners representing diverse beliefs, opinions, and experiences. Actively engaged in a caring, supportive, and fun community. Our education prepares us to be thoughtful, global citizens, serving the common good. At Fairfield University, you will get an inspiring education. For an inspired life. Fairfield University men's and women's basketball season tickets are on sale now. Experience all the action of Stags basketball. Call 203-254-4103 or log on to fairfieldstags.com. I came here with a vision. Uh, my vision was to get the tools to be better at what I do. Location was important to me because uh, I wanted to make sure that it was in a place that will help me manage career, family, and education. I'm pretty familiar with the uh, Jesuit educational tradition, and that is the concept of searching for the truth, you know, within an umbrella of ethics and social justice. You know, there's something very enriching about participating in discussions with a very talented and intelligent group of people. At the end of the day, we are part of a something bigger than each of us individually, and I think that's part of what you get when you come to Fort Philly. When was the last time you were challenged intellectually by a great speaker or wowed by an artistic performance? Fairfield University offers a provocative lineup of events that will enrich the lives of you and your family. Thrilling music, dance and theater performances, creative exhibitions, and thought-provoking lectures. Come to Fairfield University curious and leave inspired. It's hard being a student athlete. Lots of practice, lots of studying. It's about all they do. Now add to that participation in one of the intense and prestigious living and learning programs here. A couple volleyball players are doing just that. But I guess hard work and dedication is a trait in the Steiger family. I'm Amanda and I play volleyball. I'm Bethany and I play volleyball. And we're twins. And this is where we live. This is where we play. We live together, we eat together, we have class together, we play volleyball together. We've pretty much done everything together our whole lives and we even went to college together. And we're also doing the Just Us program together. Just Us stands for social justice. We are discovering ourselves through helping others, through community service, through mentor meetings, through everything that we do to better ourselves and better the community. The kinds of activities we do are usually um, activities that would have to be paid for, but we do it for free because people need these kinds of things in their society. We are actually looking to go to the communities of Bridgeport, like the local schools, and tutor kids after school. Or, I mean, with our volleyball background, we may coach or help or mentor any Bridgeport athlete. athlete. Joining Just Us, it's diversifying ourselves, it's letting me get outside my comfort bubble and really figure out who I am and who I can help along the way. So this is where we live on our Just Us floor. There's about 30 girls that are very close. Um, we like to plan a lot of activities. We usually do one activity a week. Um, we hang out with each other outside of our activity. Usually our activities involve talking about what we want to do to help better the community or help others. If just social justice is important to you, you'll make time for it. It's hard to say with volleyball and with school and with this um, residential college, it is hard to make time, but if it's something you truly desire and really want to do, you'll make time for it. 
Well, that's going to do it for this edition of Stag's Country. A special thanks to the talented students here at Fairfield University who helped produce this show. In fact, they're already hard at work producing our next show. Until then, we'll see you here in Stag's Country. Thank you.